Hi and welcome back to the next video. In this video we are very simply dockerizing a Java Spring Boot Solder template application. So for this we will use Spring Initializer so you can either do this like me I install the extension for Visual Studio Code from Spring Initializer or you can go to start.spring.io and download just the files. To follow this video here you need um, an installed version of Java, of Maven and of course Docker. So you can very simply check for example by saying Java minus minus version when you see I have installed Java 15 and you can do the same with Maven minus minus version when you see I have Maven installed in 3.6.3 as a build automation tool to use. Let's start and get our Spring Boot uh, template. So for this I'm using the Spring Initializer extension so you can just go here into the extensions from Visual Studio Code and you have it here or you could also go to um, how is it called uh, start spring io and then here we can just hit string shift and p and then we can just say spring initializer and we want to create a new maven project you could also go with a cradle project whatever you like whatever you prefer as a build automation tool you can specify the spring boot version your project language um, your group id for example i could go with thomas oliver uh, my artifact ID, let's say Spring Boot Dockerized. I want to generate a draw file and I want to use the latest Java version 14. I want, or I'm switching this up to 15 later in the POM XML from a Maven, um, but this here is not offering me 15, so I have to do it later and I don't want to add any dependencies. And then I generate this here into my folder. And I want to open this here with a different Visual Studio Code terminal because otherwise I'm not getting full um, support here from all the extensions that I installed. Then I can say um, I would like to import the Java project. I want to trust the Maven wrapper inside this project and I can exclude some files here. So now just remember we are having here this and this here is our top folder so we can later go into this here if we need to do something there and uh, yeah now we have here our pom xml so this is our spring boot starter parent version 2.4 the group id the artifact id the version the name and the description we could change this to spring boot dockerized or spring boot starter dockerized here we change the Java version to 15 because I have installed version 15 and then we can uh, then we can just say maven where are we maven spring minus boot run and then you can see now we have here our we have our here our target folder with all the compiled classes and the build succeeded but we not just want to succeed, but we also want to make a simple GET request later with our browser against an API from Spring Boot. And for this, we can very simple add another dependency so that we have like the basics for making controllers and requests and everything. So we can add here a new dependency to our POM, so our packaging where we do all the build automation, everything, the stuff. We go with group ID. This is also Spring Framework boot and the artifact ID is our spring boot starter web and now we can very simple go into our main function here or, or dockerized application and we can give this the rest controller from spring framework web and here we can make a simple public, let's say you want to return a string, let's call it home, and let's just return the string hello docker world, add semicolon, and then we make this accessible if we say request mapping, and we just go for the slash, and then if we run this application, Then we should see that it's now running and we can go for localhost 
8080, which is a standard port for uh, Spring Boot. And now you see here, hello world, or hello Docker world. So this is the main here. And for example, we could also easily switch up or switch the port. So if we go to application properties, everything that we had here will land in our jar. So then if we specify a port here, then it will update the port for our Spring Boot. So we could say server dot port and let's say 3100 then we can stop our application and run it again and now you can see that if i hit a 5 so if i reload the page when this is pending and this will result in an error here like didn't get a connection but if we go to 3100, then we have here hello docker world. So at the moment this is not dockerized, so our message is actually wrong that we are returning. But to make it right, we now want to make a simple docker container from this or of this here. So what we need for this is we want to make a simple docker file on the top of our project. And this here is wrong, so we want to be on the top and then make a docker file and we want to make a multi-stage build so here is the page from docker and multi-stage builds are useful for anyone where we struggle to optimize docker files and to keep them easy and maintain so here we have um, with every from statement in our docker file so here and here begins the new stage um, and we can, for example, copy artifacts from one stage to another and leave behind everything that we don't need. So, or everything that should not land in the final Docker image. So this can reduce the size. For example, if we can build something here in this, in this first stage, and then from here we copy from our first stage here, the example or, or, or the result to our new folder and just what we need. So we can make it a little bit smaller you can also like go here and name your first step or your first stage builder. And then you can copy from the builder stage here from this stage and copy this what you want to your working directory for the second stage root. And then you're copying just this stuff from here to this root folder. So we can just start and we can make like some comments into our code. So let's say we want to have a multi-stage build and then we can all we need is bait base image um, we can go for from and we need of course maven to build something we want to use maven 3 with the open jdk and here we want to go with version 15 because we are also using java 15 and then we can give it an alias and we could for example call it Builder, like in the example and you can always go to um, docker or hub.docker.com here you have all the images so for example you can search for something like maven and you have the maven image and then you can look up here the versions that are there you can go to to text and so on um, so we have this here so this is our um, base image um, and name stage as builder. So then the next thing is we want to make a working directory inside our image, so inside our container. Um, and this could be called, for example, thomas.app.source. So this here, create app directory, directory inside our container and this working directory command will create this here if it's not existing this folder and we can copy all our source files from here that we need so we say we want to copy from source so from this folder here everything to our working directory so we copy the source from here to inside our docker to this here 
And we also want to copy another file, and this is our pomxml. This is not lying in our source, but above it. So we say we want also our pomxml from here. And here we want to also go one directory up and copy it so into our app folder. So the pomxml will then be in our app folder and the source in like in our source folder. So like the same structure as here. So let's say copy files. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to build all the stuff that we need. So for example, the draft file. And then we just say with, we want to do it with Maven with a minus F. And then we want to go into this directory here. Or we want to go to the POM directory exactly. So to app, and then we want to go to the POM XML and want to go with clean package. So to make everything clean and then build our package from it. And you can see, for example, if I go to here and call this command, then it cleans everything and then it generates all the stuff that we need. And then there should also be a draft file. Now you see here we have our draft file and this is what we need exactly. So now you have to imagine now we have this target directory in the next step also in our docker container. So now we want to start our second stage. And so we say here we want to use OpenJDK, so Java, in version 15.0.1. We make another working directory. We could go for Thomas and now for lib. And then we want to copy sources from our first step or from our first stage here. So we can go with from and then we go from builder, so from this stage here. And there you have just to imagine where we are. So we want to just copy the draft file that we need. And so here you can just imagine we are in Thomas app. And then we not go into source like here, but we have to go into target. Because before this step, we run this clean package. This generates the target folder in our Docker container. And then there we have the same structure as here. So we want then just the draft file. So we can copy this name from here. Dot draw, and we just copy it to our working directory. And let's yeah, just shorten the name a bit. Let's say spring boot dockerized dot draw. And then here you could, for example, make some environment variables like whatever you need. But at the moment we don't need anything, so now we can expose a port, and we can go with, or we should go with the same port that we specified here in our resources. So with 3,100, and this is the port that we expose to the inner Docker communi communication network. So to the inner Docker or container communication communication network so this can also be accessible and the last thing is we need an entry point how to start everything so here we want to run the Java application and this is very simple so we want to do it with Java we want to do uh, we are having a draft file and this is lying here in Thomas lib and then we have here this name because we copied the draft from the first stage to this here to our working directory and then we just want to run this so right now we can just go to our folder here and we can just say docker bin we want to build an image and this image 
is here. So this Docker file we want to build here. Then we um, can give it a name. For example, we can say Thomas Oliver, and then we say Spring Boot Dockerized, Dockerized, and just hit Enter. And then you can see that it's going through all the stages. So first we are downloading Maven or use it Maven as builder. Then we go into our working directory or create it. Um, then we copy our source files. Then we copy our pom XML. Then we call like clean package and make or create our target classes, everything, the jar file. Then we go to the second um, stage in our Docker file, like this here. Oh, one second. Here. And now we have to download first all the dependencies that we need. And while we are doing this, we can uh, add here a command, um, a, a, a command, and let's say copy the jar from the first uh, stage to the second stage working directory and let's have a look if everything finished so now it's still downloading so let's wait a bit so here now everything was downloaded then the next steps we're doing removing container then get the open jdk 15 then go to working directory or create it copy the target or, or our jar file from the first stage then expose our port 3100 um, here and make the entry point so now we have built the image and now we can run the image so let's go to here and now we can see what I typed in here so now we can go with docker run then we can um, make a port available to our host machine so to my computer um, and here we can so for example we are mapping an outside port to um, a port inside our docker container so that's accessible and then we just have to name it the same as we named it before so I think it was uh, spring boot dockerized so now we can hit this and I will just see if everything works so we have a running Java spring boot application and if we go for this port, nothing should happen because this 3100 is now only um, accessible from inside our container network. So this here is only available from inside, but we are now outside. And here you saw in our command, we were mapping this inside port here inside our Docker container with our outside port for the host machine 8080. So if we go here for 8080, this should us get the hello docker world. So this was very simply dockerizing it. And now we can make like a little bit explanation of the port mapping. So we can just draw it here. So let's try to draw it a bit. So we say we are here on our host machine. Let's uh, just call it host machine so for example on my desktop and then inside this we have here our our running our docker so this here is our docker yeah whatever so this is docker and then inside our docker we have right now our spring boot app and this is listening to port 3000 100 and this is being mapped here to our port 8080 that is available from our host machine so here we are as a user this is what we can see and this is just mapping the port 